I know we all have heard it, but truly, truly sunscreen is so important and we need to protect our skin from the damaging sun rays. Today, I'm going to go over some super goop products, some sunscreen and show you the difference and also share a story with you of my basal cell cancer story. Yes, I was diagnosed with that years ago and it was very scary. I will get to more of that towards the end of the video. So let's jump right into it. I have four different products here and I am going to apply them all to my face in different areas and then put some BB cream over them so we can see how it looks if you're going to wear a BB cream or tinted moisturizer, that kind of thing over these. Start with their kind of OG product. And this is the Super Goop. Of course, it's all Super Goop. This is the Play Everyday Lotion SPF 50 with sunflower extract. I did wanna say before we get started into the nitty gritty here that these were all gifted to me. Thank you so much to Super Goop for trying them out. There was no requirements to do a video or review or anything like that. And Super Goop is cruelty free and all their products are made in the US. So we love that. And they all do have the expiration date printed right on the box here. So I personally like that as well. This is a chemical sunscreen. And I know that there has been talk if sunscreens are reef friendly and the mineral ones are gonna always be your best bet um, for being reef friendly if you are concerned with that, which we should be. Um, <laughs> but their chemical ones are also reef friendly. And what that means is when you're looking at any sunscreen, there is um, a list of ingredients, and I will have this article linked down below if you want to read more about like what makes it reef friendly or reef safe. This is made to go on your face and your body. I have noticed that on all of these products, no matter where I looked on what website, the pricing was the same, which I do appreciate that. The thing that I noticed was the size offering sometimes was different. This is a 2.4 fluid ounce. It's about the size, well, about a little bit bigger than my palm. And this size retails for $22. It can be purchased on their website, Athleta website, Tennis Express, Revolve, Sephora, Sephora at Kohl's, and Ulta. And this says reapply after 80 minutes of swimming or sweating, or at least every two hours. So you can see here, it's like your typical, you know, white cast sunscreen. Put this one on my forehead. There is, it says no synthetic fragrances, but there is a little bit of a scent. Um, what am I, what is that? It's almost, it's not overpowering. And I'll put this on my nose and down onto my chin. It's almost a little bit like citrusy, maybe or fruity so blends in very quickly you can see it does feel a little bit tacky and the cap is screw on like that this does say that it's spf 50 p a plus 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 so there's four plus in america I have the spf well the pa is kind of a korean ranking so if it has a one plus sign that means it provides some protection against the uva rays two plus signs is moderate three provides the best protection out of the three and then the four is like the ultra protection now we have the unseen sunscreen and this is like the it's a chemical one like the play but this one is made specifically for your face not for your body and it is invisible it's spf 40 where the other one was spf 50. the play one has four little plus signs after the pa and this one has three plus signs oh i don't think i said the sizing the different sizes of the play one if you want the most options for the sizes that you can purchase i would say go to their site you can get the one ounce for ten dollars that size is twenty two dollars 5.5, $32, or an 18 ounce for 
Now Athleta, some of the other websites only have one size available. Sephora has three different sizes available and Ulta has one size. So this one is wet and sweat and resistance for 40 minutes. So if you're going to be out and about, the again, the play one is 80 minutes and this one is 40 minutes. Size retails for $36 on their website. They also have a 0.68 for $20, one fluid ounce for $27. And both Sephora and Ulta have a mini and a bigger size of this one. I'm gonna put this one on this side of my face. I'm not gonna put these on the cheekbone because we're gonna use a different product for that. And this is a more clear gel. Now, the play one is more of a cream consistency. This one is more of a gel. There's a little bit of a scent. It says no synthetic fragrances. Again, this is a chemical one too. It's more of like a, like frankincense. This feels really soft. So this one is definitely more of a slippery um, feel than the cream. This is closer to what I would say, kind of like the Smashbox Photo Finish Primer. It's more lightweight than that, but kind of giving it's reminding me of that. I want to mention I had basal cell can skin cancer and the average age for that is 67. I got it in my 30s. So and when they had to go in to remove it, they said that they had never seen where they had to go in so deep on a person so young. And I was the youngest person in the office. So you know, it can happen. This is the Mineral Sheer Screen. This has an SPF 30, and it has three plus signs after the PA. So again, this is a mineral one. The other ones are chemical. It is similar to the Unseen. It's the same idea as that one, but the Unseen is chemical, and this sheer one is the mineral. It is made without non-nano zinc oxide, and because it is the mineral it's not completely invisible but it's sheer this size right here is a 1.5 fluid ounce this retails for 38 dollars if you want to just try it out on their site they do have a 0.5 for 17 or a 0.68 for 20 and again sephora and alta does have a mini and a larger size of this one as well so this is the sheer screen so we're back to having a white cream there Again, these have no synthetic fragrance, so whatever the fragrance is, it's the natural. There is a little bit. This one almost smells like, it's giving me like milky. And the difference really between a chemical and a mineral comes just down to the name. Chemical uses chemicals to filter out the sun's damage from the UV rays, and mineral doesn't. I would say out of the three, this probably has the most scent that you can Again, it's not overpowering, but probably the most. It's kind of like milky, like, okay. So this one is definitely stickier than the Unseen on this side, the clear one. So that one is definitely more tacky. Out of the three, this is the Unseen is the kind of smoothest that you're gonna get. The last product that we're gonna try before we put on some makeup is the glow stick and this is SPF 50. This is $25 whether you buy it on their site Sephora or Ulta and this is for on the go and it's just twist up and it goes on clear. I don't think there's a scent to it. The one that I can feel on my skin the most so far is the mineral one. Um, this one I can't feel at all. A little bit right here I can feel it, but yeah, definitely this one is like, I won't say the heavy, I guess the heaviest if you want to go on that way as far as like how you can feel. So this one it says can be used, woo, okay, that feels really nice. Oops, what do I got there? It is just, it like, yeah, it feels like a balm almost. Um, woo. Yeah, that feels really nice. Okay, and it does add, if you were going with no makeup, 
going to swim or something, you can see it does add a little bit of shine and sheen kind of right there. So you're getting a little bit of a highlight without putting on a highlight. So I know how this Pure Lease Ageless Glow Serum BB Cream, how it performs. So I thought it would be a good one to try over this to see if we can see any differences with any of these underneath. I forget how old I was, but I, in the past, you know, I had some moles and some kind of bumps that I had gotten checked out before in my life and they always came back with nothing. You know, like I've had some moles burned off, froze off and you know, they test them and then it always comes back, you know, fine, Neg nothing. So I had this mole right here for the longest time or what I thought was a mole and I wear glasses but when I was going out boating or on a wave runner or anything, you know, I would take my glasses off and would always forget to put sunblock right there because the glasses cover it. Well, I just thought, okay, it's, you know, I didn't really pay too much attention to it, but then I did notice that it kind of started itching and I thought that it was changing a little bit. So, you know, it is very, very, very important. If you, you know, take a picture of if you have a mole or something, take a picture, you know, keep an eye on it because it's so important. So it was changing. So I made an appointment to a dermatologist and, you know, they said that they would obviously take a sample and send it out. Well, there have been like I said, quite a few that I had removed and tested at this point. So I thought, you know, I wasn't worried. Like, okay, it's going to be nothing. So at that time, I had never heard of basal cell cancer, didn't know anything about it. When they called and said it came back positive for basal cell, yeah, I freaked out because you hear like skin cancer and it's like, you know, as I'm pretty sure it was only in my 30s. Yeah, at that yeah, at that time. So it's like, what the heck? And so then, you know, she they immediately said, like, it's not like threatening, you can get it removed. And, you know, I've done more research and stuff, so it's like, okay, that calmed me down. But of course, you know, it's it freaks you out. And it's estimated that there is 3.6 million cases of basal cell cancer diagnosed each year and what they do is they go in and they remove a layer of it then they go and test like at the same facility they go and test and then they keep doing small removal layers until they get it all this wasn't at a dermatologist this was at a separate like another office i already had a panic attack at this point in my life and uh, I almost didn't make it to the office because yeah, I had another panic attack because it's like, oh my gosh, you know, but made it there. And luckily my mom went with me. So you, you go in and, you know, they explain it to you. Well, I, they might've explained it to me beforehand and I probably researched it. But so you're laying back and they're removing this. Well, they said that they had to go the deepest in that office. They had never gone this deep on a patient so young. So it's like, ugh. Um, hmm. And they, I don't think I took a picture and my mom take a picture of this. You know, I'm laying back and they're finally done. Like, I forget how many, how long I was there. We, it was a long time because they had to keep, you know, going back. And they're like, oh, do you want to hold up a mirror? We can hold up a mirror if you want to see it before, you know, we stitch it up. Because there is, there's a little scar there. And, of course, I said yes. So they hold up the mirror and it's like, <laughs> obviously I didn't have like a hole in my nose. But it kind of felt like I had this like deep hole pretty much in my, you know, bridge of my nose right here. It was gross and it's like why did i why did i want to see that but yeah okay i have some thoughts i do have dry skin i am in my 40s and but i did put some 
oil on and make sure my skin was moisturized. Mineral One is definitely clinging, making the product clean, cling to my dry spots, anything, and showing some texture there and on my chin. And it seems like right here, I don't have oily skin at all. And it seems like the product isn't really, it's kind of already wiping away right here on my chin. Um, but the unseen one is very smooth and I feel like the highlighter isn't looking dry at all or the glow stick, it isn't making anything look dry. My first impressions, we will see how it will wear, but if you're going to wear makeup over it, my first impressions if you have dry skin is to go with the unseen one and then maybe just the glow stick if you want just something to take on the go with you. Let me put some bronzer on and we'll keep chatting a little bit about this important topic. Then I regularly had appointments, which I'm past due, I need to do, but with a dermatologist, you know, just so they could do like a full body scan. That way, you know, like if anything changes or not, I do have a little bit of a scar right here. You can't really see it usually. You have to be pretty much, I feel like in person to really see it but it was a very traumatic i mean the people were nice they didn't make it traumatic but just getting that diagnosis in when we were there you know that they had to keep going back keep going back it was pretty traumatic and i always <laughs> wear sunblock now before that i was pretty good about wearing sunblock when i was little i would go outside a lot well no I shouldn't say a lot. When it was too hot, I don't go outside because I get sick from the heat. I have, since I was a baby, in the stroller. My mom said that, I don't know, was it at the zoo, I think she said? And, you know, I was, my face was red and I was crying because I couldn't talk. And a nurse came over and was like, your baby's overheated, get her a cool washcloth. So it's just my makeup. I get overheated very easily and feel sick from from it. So if I am outside in the summer, that means that I'm usually want to be on a boat, in a swimming pool, somewhere in the water to cool off. And one time when I was really little, I was outside in one of those like slip and slide things at my cousin's and I didn't have sunblock on. Yeah. So <laughs> you can kind of guess that I was burnt to a crisp. Should have probably went to the hospital because the burns were, I mean, I was sunburned so bad that I had the chills and it was just awful. So I'm sure, I don't know, but I would assume maybe getting sunburnt that severely. And then on top of, you know, every time I thought I was being so good about applying it, but then I would get on the Wave Runner and not wear any glasses and I'd forget to put it right there, like I said. So, so make sure you're applying it in all of the spots <laughs> and don't skip anything. So have you ever had any kind of medical scare like that? just like to kind of warm this up a little bit. And the interesting thing is too, as far as like sun protection. So when my mom turned 50, my sister and I got her a gift certificate for a like day spa thing at Elizabeth Arden. And you know, she is fair skinned too and has pretty much stayed out of the sun most of her life. She doesn't like boating or anything like that. So, and at that time when she went, they had one of those things where you put your face like in it and it will show the skin damage. And the technician said that her skin looked better at 50 than most of the 20 year olds that come in because of she had so little skin, sin, so little sun damage. And it had to be, I mean, she's taken care of her skin too, but it, it had to be that she stays out of the sun. So it's really, really important to, you know, be cautious when you're in the sun in those rays, 
to wear sunblock. Even when you're driving, like I was always bad about that too. When, you know, if you're driving somewhere and you have your window down and your arm up, like not putting sunblock on your arm and then you have like one arm, you know, with tan and one arm not, or in my case, burnt. So how are you about putting on sunscreen? Do you always apply it year round, no matter what? Or are you a person that only applies it in the summer when you, like that's the only time you think about it? I've had this on now about three and a half hours and I'm feeling the same way as my first impressions. If you are wanting to have a sunscreen for your face under makeup and you have dry skin, I would personally recommend the Unseen sunscreen. That is that clear one. I think that that is going to be your best bet under makeup. If you're not going to wear any makeup but you want some glow, this glow stick definitely. Um, I mean, I know I have the Pixi blush on that has a little bit of shimmer, but this definitely gave some glow. So then it really just, as far as the rest, these two, it really is if you prefer a mineral or a chemical one. And I would say that the, the mineral one is going to be a little bit heavier than the chemical one, but very, very similar. None of these showed a white cast when I had them on, as you saw, or under my foundation. Overall, I am happy with these all. Thank you so much again to Supergoop, and I am going to use them all. What I would probably repurchase as of right now that I'm thinking is the Unseen Sunscreen for my face, and probably the Play, that way I could have a body and a face one. If I was just to pick two, those would be the two that I would use. I would love to know your thoughts if you have tried Supergoop or what is your favorite sunscreen that you currently use. Thank you so much for watching and I hope that you will come on back and see me. Have a wonderful day and until next time, bye!